Greetings everyone, this is Connor from Dagura TV, and in this video I'm coming to you with my top 10 most anticipated video games of 2018. Before we get into the top 10 list, I just want to give a one quick honourable mention, and the reason why it's not made the list is because it's technically not a game, it's an expansion. And it's the World of Warcraft expansion of Battle for Azeroth, which is going to be coming out quarter 3, quarter 4 of this year, of 2018. And the reason why I've decided to like just give it a quick shout out is because I always put a hell of a lot of hours into the World of Warcraft expansions, and I'm really looking forward to this new one. But it's not a technically a full release video game, even though it's probably bigger than everything else on this list. So um, I just wanted to like give it a shout out, give it a mention, and just let people know that I'm really looking forward to it. I will also preface as well, there is a few games that aren't on here um, that aren't going to be coming out in 2018 or no, not going to be really what up my alley. So things like Anthem is not going to be on here because, you know, I don't really have faith in that game. And I haven't put Kojima's game on here, Death Stranding, because I've got no faith at all in it coming out in 2018. And we haven't heard anything about it saying it's coming out in 2018. So I decided to leave that one out. Everything on this list, though, has been had some news article or some official statement from a company saying 2018. And I'll tell you if I believe or not whether the game is coming out in said year or not, or if it's going to be delayed further onwards. So why wait any further, here are my top 10 most anticipated video games of 2018. 10. The Priscilla's Shallows of Madagascar. Located on the cusp of a bustling trade route, it is the perfect place for an ambush. And number 10, it's Skull and Bones, and this will probably be a bit of a surprise to people on the list, because I think people may have forgotten about it, because it was kind of a surprise when it was released at E3, the footage and the announcement of it at the Ubisoft press conference this year, because um, it was kind of really inspired heavily by the Assassin's Creed 4 Black Flag combat style, which is something that I absolutely adored, it's my favourite Assassin's Creed game. So to get a game really made completely around that style, and it's an online one where you can get in squads with your friends and kind of rule the high seas, is really cool, it's a really cool idea, and I, I really do enjoy pirate games, I love the theme of pirates, I think it's a pretty sick theme that has really been underused in video games a lot for a long time, and it seems this year we're going to be getting quite a few of them. So I'm pretty excited to actually see more about Skull and Bones, made by Ubisoft, it's said that it's meant to be out quarter 3, quarter 4 this year, however I do think that they've taken it away and worked on it a lot because and the guys at Ubisoft Singapore, there was, a, there was a lot of information that came out after the press conference where they said things like, you know, you're not allowed to get off the boat, you can't exactly walk around. You, you, what you are controlling is the boat. That is your character, really. So they've people have gone to them saying, oh, I kind of like to walk around, you know, be able to go to a menu where, you know, like kind of doing Assassin's Creed 4, we can go into a... You know, kind of like a, a little area, you know, in the downstairs, the kind of captain's quarters bit where you can upgrade your ship, change the outlook of it and things like that. And also, it's well to be able to board ships, you know, be able to bring them down to a certain level of health, draw them in and fight the people on the ships and stuff like that and go on there and take them on and take the loot and things. Maybe you won't be able to do that to other players, but I think it'd be cool to have some AI ships out there, you know, to be able to take out and, you know, build ship up. It shouldn't just be on a full player area, really, you know, just a huge map full of players because then... You know, it will be a very much a trickle-down system of the guys at the top all the way to the bottom, and it's very hard to jump into, especially if the game's been going for such a long time, to get right in there and try and build your ship up when you're playing against people that are already set up in the game. So, you know, it's kind of a hard balancing act for the people at Ubisoft to make, and especially with the way the announcements that they made straight after the press conference about it, because I think people saw it and was like, holy shit, this is really cool, I'm really looking forward to seeing more on Skull and Bones. And then the announcement kind of brought people down to it. But I've got, you know, I've got faith in Ubisoft to kind of pull it together. A bit. I think they've taken the criticisms of what people played and stuff like that, what people heard, and have taken that back and gone to work on it, which is why I don't think it'll be out in 2018. If anything, I think the earliest we'll see it is maybe summertime 2019, if I had to guess. But I think we can predict it is going to be out towards the back end of 2019. But we'll see what they say at E3 this year. I mean, I'm definitely sure that we'll hear about this game again at E3. And I'm looking forward to seeing more on it. Are you going to do it? So God of War is a game that we've really seen for quite a bit now, you know, a couple of E3s in a row, we've seen a few things as well at PSX, not this year but the year before, uh, made by certainly Santa Monica, and it's a God of War that's had a real big change in style, really go for that Norse mythology look and everything which is becoming really popular again, and I'm looking forward to seeing what really can be done when it comes down to enemy types and the big fights that we've got, because the little glimpse that we got in the first gameplay uh, area that we saw in E3 2016 with Kratos and his son taking that hunting, that fight with that massive beast of a 
monster was really cool. It looked really, really cool. Really gritty, really dark. And I'm looking forward to seeing more from it. And it's going to be out quarter one 2018. We haven't got an official release date yet. I, th if, I do think that's going to be correct. I don't think it's going to be too long before it goes away. Because uh, apparently PlayStation have already been talking about pre-order numbers. And already been looking at them um, so far recently. That's what I've seen on Twitter and things like that. So I'm looking forward to really getting a good release date of this game. To be able to give it a go. Because I do think that... Although it's going to be such a far cry from the original God of War games, which I'm going to be honest, I haven't got a real big kind of collusion with. I don't really like the original God of War games that much. I do like the scale of them all and the huge fights and everything. But I like the, having that scale of huge monsters and huge attacks and everything in real hard areas. But with a grounded, gritty story that what we're going to have with Kratos and his son. And it looks like the way that they've made the look of the game and the theme that they've got as well really kind of suit it. So I'm pretty excited to kind of see if it all comes together really well because I've got full faith in Sony Santa Monica. I think they're a really good studio. And it's a franchise that really did need a fresh lick of paint. So we'll see if it really comes off for them. I, I do like as well that they've kept with the name God of War, not re, you know retitled it or anything or uh, tried to attach it to a different franchise. Because I, I do think Kratos as a character can, you know, come to be in one of the major parts of the Sony back catalogue again. And because, you know, God of War is kind of something that's become a little bit irrelevant over recent years. And hopefully this is something that can push it right into the limelight again. Because I do think that God of War, you know, with this fresh look apparently and everything, could really, you know, suit someone like me and people who maybe don't have a real good affection for the God of War franchise. Whereas the current God of War fans, the big ones, may be a little bit disappointed. But I'm pretty sure if they give it a go, they might find something to like about it when it comes to a dark, gritty story. Because it's a different take. And, you know, not always the hardcore fans of the franchise don't like it when they take a different take. But it does work, you know, in some cases. Like we saw with Zelda this year and things like that. You know, where... Of 2017, sorry. Where, you know, they completely revitalized the way that the world was structured and made it different and it went down a storm so if they do it well hopefully god of war will be a game that's really great and we'll be talking about it in the top 10 list at the end of the year but we'll see what happens when it comes out close your heart to their desperation close your heart to their suffering great At number 8, it's Kingdom Come Deliverance by Warhorse Studios, and this has been in the top 10 for a couple of years in a row now, because um, Warhorse have kept pushing this game back and back and back. We've known about this game for a long time. It's a medieval style game set in the, set in the 1500s in Bohemia, which is now the modern day Czech Republic. And it's meant to be kind of like a more realistic style approach on the medieval RPG. Which, you know, you see in things like, you know, Skyrim and Witcher 3, which is obviously a thing that, you know, I really endure, you know, that combat style. But having one set in the real world really intrigues me and really loves, and I love the idea of that because I'm a big fan of history. I love history. And so Kingdom Come, I'm hoping it to be pretty historically accurate when it comes to its story because it's a... The Bohemia area of the, you know, the 15th century is not something I know a lot about. I know bits and pieces, so you know, being able to expand my knowledge will be really cool. It'll be interesting to see how historically accurate it is. But as well, you know, we've got to remember that it is a game, and having a game in that setting, it looks fantastic. Already said to have a really good story and everything. But I also, you know, interested to see how well the combat is. I've, seen, I've watched a lot of footage on this game um, quite a while ago. Uh, so I'm definitely going to have to catch up. It's out 13th of February is the official release date it's got. It's coming to Steam as well. Uh, so I'm looking forward to seeing where, you know, where how Warhorse have done with it. Because, you know, they've had a lot of time to work on this game. I've been looking forward to it for a long time. It may have dropped off my radar until, you know, really making this video. Kind of thinking, you know, where is Kingdom Come Deliverance? And I was thinking, where is that game? You know, we didn't come out this year uh, and googled it and then got the release days so like, happy days so you know I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing it i'll probably do some content on it on the channel as well if it you know really if i really do you know reside with it if i really do like the game i'll definitely let people know to check it out because it's something that you know for fans of my channel you know the elder schools fans could look at something like this and be intrigued by it because you know it's a very while you know you know skyrim and you know the elder schools games are in a fantastical setting you know they've got that kind of medieval culture to them so you know kingdom come deliverance could be something to, you know to kind of scratch that itch for a medieval rpg which to be honest wasn't really scratched in 2017. seven just a little while longer Hold on, just a little while longer. And number seven is David Cage's game, Detroit Become Human. And David Cage is one of the most interesting men in the industry. 
in my opinion. I think he's just a, f a fantastic mind. You know, he's got a real unique way of, you know, telling his stories. And Detroit Become Human has done nothing but impress me with the stuff that they're showing with the impact of choices and how different things can go. All the way from that real first kind of like five, ten minute trailer, the, that five minute trailer they showed at E3, not the year just gone, but the year beforehand, 2016. Really, really cool. And then showing it, really, the story is kind of telling by the told by through the eyes of three different characters and telling the story of this kind of war against the kind of droids in the world you know it looks really really cool i wanted to be able to play at egx at the, this year i didn't get a chance to so i'm hopefully hopefully being able to get a chance this year hoping as well to get a hard release date soon because we said it's 2018 i do think it's going to be out this year uh, less, I wasn't confident it was going to be out last year, so I, I think I kept it off my most anticipated list. But this year, I, I'm pretty confident it's going to be out this year. So I'm looking forward to really giving it a go and seeing the impact of pl player choice in it. Because, you know, I do love story. And I love how, the way that David Cage has told his, in the past, you know, games like Fahrenheit and Heavy Rain. Really, really cool and really, really chaotic and epic story moments. And I, I love that. And just freaking batshit crazy at times. So I'm looking forward to see the route which Detroit goes down. Um, when it comes down to, you know, how really all these different choices result in endings. Because sometimes, you know, there's games where they come down to a choice, A, a choice, B, no matter what choice you've made before. And while that has been worked really well in some games, like Life is Strange, for instance, I want this to be a bit different, to have such an open playing field when it comes down to the endings of the game. So, hopefully it will be, really will be a unique story, and we'll see how Detroit Become Human really comes, comes out at the end of the year, because... It could be one of those where, you know, it, it does really well critically or doesn't sell well. Or it could be one of those that is absolutely terrible with critics, but the people who play it really like it. I don't. I think it's going to be quite a divisive game because David Cage's way of doing things is quite a divisive style. So I'm looking forward to really giving it a go and really getting my nails dug into it. I'm going to send the humans a message. Six. And number six is Metro Exodus, and why if people don't know, I'm a big fan of the Metro series. I think it's a really cool take on the post-apocalyptic world. I love 2033, and in particular, Last Light. I think the way they tell the story as well is phenomenal, and the way that they deal with the theme of the game as well, um, you know, with pushing forward, you know, the story through the way in a really creepy setting a lot of it's set underground and you know with the characters that you meet in the game as well are kind of really hard done by and kind of gritty and got a lot more personality to them i, I prefer it personally as a, as a post-apocalyptic take is what the newer fallout games have kind of really given us because i do think that it kind of gives it's a bit more of a horror kind of style to it as well you know with things jumping out of you the enemy types you meet are really creepy it's a different way it's more like an eastern european look at it and but i just think it's really cool and the way that they've shown you know some of the enemy types and some of the you know the real kind of set pieces that we saw in the uh, metro gameplay at e3 this year in the xbox microsoft uh, press conference it was really cool that that wolf looked really really cool and the train coming through and everything it looks like the game is going to be sitting outside a lot more while we had a bit of that you know, in, in the recent ones, we haven't had a whole lot of it. Um, so I'm definitely looking forward to seeing what the wider world of Metro looks like. Especially this one's going to be quite a lot different as well, which is why, one of the reasons why it's a little bit further down the list. is because it's not as much based off the books as the first two were. The first two were pretty much direct adaptations of books with a bit more choice in them, obviously. And so it takes a little bit of liberty with them. This one is going on its own. And it's having its own kind of unique story based off, you know, the original stories, basically. But, you know, at the end of the day, I do think that maybe that could have a... A negative impact on how the game does when it comes down to telling its story so i'm a little bit worried on that front but other than that though i'm definitely going to give this game a go and i'm looking forward to playing it because you know people do you know as you'll know you know when you get a new installment to a franchise that you like you're obviously going to be excited for it so metro is one that i think that you know the rpg people will like as well and because it's a bit of a different take on it you know i, I do like having you know, it's all, all well and good having these kind of RPGs that are, you know, big open worlds and everything like that. This one is very claustrophobic, you know, very tight areas and things like that. If that, you know, this one I think will have the bigger areas as well, like the areas that you can kind of explore around. But it's one that you've got to be quiet and quite sneaky with. And it's, you know, it's really cool as well, you know, the RPG elements of the game and the kind of real life attachments to it. Like, you know, wiping the gas off your mask and things like that. They're just... I just think it's really interesting. You've got to keep tabs on your gear and clear out the ventilations and stuff. So we'll hopefully see what the new one has um, in regards to that stuff. Because there hasn't been a huge amount of information on it yet. It does say they want it out in quarter four 2018. So this is one that maybe could get pushed. But I do think that how quiet 4A games have been gives me a bit of an indication that it will actually come out this year. So we'll definitely have to wait and see. Hopefully get a release date soon. Metro Exodus.
At number five is a massive maybe, but it's The Last of Us Part 2 by Naughty Dog. Um, a game that we've actually seen a bit more of so far than what I was expecting. We had a you know, the kind of a cutscene that we got, which was a lot of backlash by how violent it was. And uh, we obviously got the real announcement trailer when she's playing, Ellie's playing the guitar. But the game looks really, really good. You know, like, um, stunningly good, actually, with, you know, it's... It's what Naughty Dog do at the end of the day. They're probably the leading ones for the Xbox console. Sorry, with the PlayStation console, of having the games looking as good as they can possibly be. And The Last of Us Part Two, I do think it will be. While I do th don't think it's going to do as well as the first one, maybe because I feel like people are getting a bit sick of zombies now. I do think you know it's still going to do groundbreakingly well. You know, The Last of Us is a series that really got us with the first one. The first one is very, very popular, really critically well received. And even though I don't think it's going to be out this year, certainly I've said 2018. Um, so if you go on the Wikipedia, it says 2018. There's one article that says that's what they're hoping for. So I decided to put it on the list to cover me bases. But judging by how Neil Druckmann's been on Twitter and everything and how kind of they were just doing mocap just a few months ago, like there was a bit pictures going around on Twitter of the pig that they were mocapping. So we'll see when this game really comes out. I, I'm fine to bet. I think it will be summer 2019. That's when I... I because you know Naughty Dog aren't really that good at making the dates of you know the year they always seem to get the games pushed back like Uncharted was meant to be out in 2015 and then it got pushed back into 2016 and I think it could be a very similar thing with The Last of Us Part 2 maybe we meant to come out this year and then they say we need extra time to you know sand down the edges make it less rough and everything make it cleaner and bring it out next year but I'm happy waiting for this one. I just wanted to let you know that I'm still looking forward to it. I didn't want people going mental at me in the comments about this one because I'm looking forward to another Naughty Dog game because if you've watched the channel for long enough, you'll know that I love Naughty Dog. I love the way they tell the stories and I think that Last of Us Part 2 is definitely going to be one that's going to be one of the best told when it, whichever year it comes out in. Four. is a way out by Hazelight and a Hazelight are the people who made a brother's a tale of two sons which is one of my favorite most favorite games of all time the way it tells its stories at twin stick really really fantastic and it's keeping that two character thing but breaking it a more of a co-op thing with you and your friend are able to play it I'm sure a lot of you heard about this game about what happened with the developer Joseph Farris at the game awards and they're going out they're going absolutely batshit crazy absolutely fucking hilarious the way he just went out there hilarious absolutely hilarious foot the Oscars all that stuff and then this year he's actually come out and said that you only need to buy one copy. So for two people you only need to buy one copy of the game. I'm pretty sure we'll buy two just to support the studio because I'm a big fan of what Hayes Light have done and I'm really looking forward to a way out. You know, um, the people that I'm going to play with really do enjoy puzzles. I kind of like them. I'm not a huge fan of puzzles, but I do like them. But I do like the way that it's uniting kind of the two characters into one again. And Hayes Light really do tell a really good story. It's a bit more, it seems a bit more advanced in... You know, it's kind of its art style, a bit more advanced in the way that the game looks and graphically. It looks a lot more than what uh, the Brothers of Taylor 2 Sun was. But I think that's bound to happen because of how well Brothers did. And, you know, Brothers was so critically well received. And this game's out March 23rd. I'm really, really looking forward to it. And, you know, I, I'm pretty confident that the game's actually going to be really good. I'm probably more confident about the game on this list. I'd probably say that about any of the others because I think Hayes might Hale have a good track record. I feel they've got a bit of a budget this year to play with. And I also think that the people that are making the game are really passionate about what they're making. I mean, <laughs> there's no doubt that Joseph Farris is a passionate man. He's told us himself. But I do think that A Way Out is something that... It's, it's a game, it's a single-player game made under the EA banner. Which I don't think is going to be touched with, you know, the whole microtransactions, games as a service nonsense. I do think it's going to be a game that's going to be a really, really well done one, and I'm really looking forward to playing it. Uh, I hope it's not. I hope it's not going to be one of those things where they tried to make too much of a good thing and made it really, really long. I hope it's kind of like a contained experience, like Brothers was. We'll have to see all this stuff when the game when the game comes out. But I'm pretty confident they would have nailed it. So March 23rd, that is probably on this list one of the first games I'm really looking forward to this year. Reconnecting with loved ones. She's so beautiful. Three. Ah, the joy of a new voyage far across the Sea of Thieves. Just you, the wide open world, and oh well. It's not just you, she's here too. 
Oh, at number three, it's Sea of Thieves by Rare. And Rare is a really iconic studio, you know, really kind of showed how real much of an iconic studio they are and how much of a big impact they've had on this industry. With the Rare collection released a couple of years ago, and it was a great time being able to play through those games. Some of them for the first time, a few of those, you know, obviously are absolute classics that people have played before. But Sea of Thieves is the next one, and people were kind of really kind of skeptical when they announced this, like a, a pirate game, a cult pirate game, where you all control different areas of the ship and go out and kind of do adventures and fight different players and stuff like that. But it's out March 20th, March, March 20th, and after a couple of, you know, showings of what the game really is and, you know, some of E3 and, and more people playing the game and stuff like that, people tend to really like it. I've actually played the game myself in a beta that they had. I just a couple of, I think it was about a month ago now when they had the beta. And while I do think the game, they've got some stuff to work on, um, you know, with regards to its servers. And also, I think they've got stuff to work on in regards to, you know, what they've got to make in regards to the adventures and stuff like that. I do think that the game is still going to be a lot of fun because of the people that you play it with. Out March 20th, as I said, they've announced it, so there's not a huge amount of time for them to really crack down on this stuff. So I don't think it's going to be the perfect game, but I just know for a fact that I will have a lot of fun with this game. If the game works, you know, if we're able to get into the game and be able to play for a long period of time, we'll have a lot of fun with it. But I just feel like, as well, the, the stuff that they've got to work on, I don't think it will be sold by launch. So that's why it isn't at number one, because it wasn't number one before I played that beta. And while I did have a lot of fun in the beta, just the, how kind of poorly that the game kept, you know, we couldn't really string an hour together without it working ineffectively. And you could say, yeah, it's alpha, but, you know, the game is only three months away. So, well, two months away now. So we'll have to wait and see how the game really does when it comes out. I think people who do play will have a lot of fun with it, but I don't think it's going to be the groundbreaking success that Microsoft would have wanted. And what March 20th, we'll have to see what it's all about. I will be getting it on launch day and we'll definitely be giving it a go. So we'll have to see how it is when it comes out. Thankfully, for every tense standoff, there's a moment of celebration or shared wonder. But for now, store your hard-earned loot and enjoy the voyage. Two. And number two is a game that's meant to be coming out last year, but it's actually coming out this year. Is Red Dead Redemption 2 by Rockstar. Red Dead is the sequel to Red Dead Redemption is something that we've been waiting for for such a long time, and I can't wait to play Red Dead Redemption 2 because Rockstar really do make fantastic single-player stories. So even if the online has got a lot of bullshit in it and it's got a load of stuff in there that I just really don't care about, I do think that Red Dead 2 will just have such a real good 30-hour story that will keep me in because they they're so good at you know developing characters. Grand Theft Auto 5 was absolutely sincere because of it and I do think that Red Dead 2 will have the same thing I, it, there's rumors you know people are looking into it and making it look like it's actually a prequel set further down by in the past and really kind of that finding the story about these seven kind of characters that we've seen in the trailer we haven't seen a huge amount about Red Dead 2 at this day and Rockstar don't really need to they're that big of a company that they can honestly just release the game now and sell millions and millions and millions of copies you know that's how really how much of a behemoth they are in the gaming space and I do think the Red Dead 2, when it comes down to it, will be one of the games of the year when it comes out. Um, I do think it will come out this year. I do think we'll get a release date fairly soon. And that will be the one that I think they'll stick by because, you know, if, I don't think we'll have a GTA 5 situation where we've got delayed three times, then came out and then delayed another few times for PC. Eventually, though, it got there and it did work perfectly fine. So... I'll say, you know, don't rush, don't rush it out, don't make it out just because they've got the reputation. If they need to take it as much time as they need to make, because I really want this game to be fantastic. I've, I've got full belief that it does, because Red Dead Redemption 1 has got one of the best stories I've ever played in a video game. Really cool setting as well, the western style of it all, you know, the wild west of America. Really, really cool setting. Something that isn't really experienced a huge amount in games, but the ones that have done it well have done it really well, you know, like Red Dead and, you know, Call of Juarez and stuff like that, so... But Red Dead 2, I do think it could be above and beyond what Red Dead Redemption 1 was because I think it'll have a better, you know, better set pieces and stuff like that. Because now it's kind of a dated game, if we're going to be honest with you. You know, if you go back and play it, I played it recently on the Xbox One backwards compatibility that they've got on it. And I, I played it a few months ago and it is a really dated game now, but still really, really good, you know, in the way it tells its story and the, and the characters that you meet in it. So Red Dead 2, I'm hoping it will be quite similar to the way that they grasp it with the story, but also taking it a, a big step further. And I think that Rockstar have got the capacity to be able to do that and I also think as well they've got the ability to do it because they did it with GTA 5. GTA 5 is still one of the best single player campaigns I've ever played and Red Dead, I don't think the multiplayer is going to be nowhere near as good as what GTA 5 was but I do think it will be a better single player story because I think that the setting that they've got it makes it be a bit more grittier and it's a, bit, it's a lot more grounded than GTA is which I think at least having a bit more of an impactful story. So I'm, I'm really looking forward to it and we'll see how it is when it comes out. This is over.
Yuri, I'm here. And number one is Spider-Man by Insomniac. The rumours of this game is it's going to be out in the summer this year, which I cannot, absolutely cannot wait for because I love Spider-Man. I love Spider-Man to my bones. And I feel like we haven't had a real good Spider-Man game for a hell of a long time. Activision didn't treat the IP with respect at all. And now Sony have been able to give it to Insomniac. I think Insomniac are the perfect company to take it forward. When it got announced, I was hoping it'd get announced at the E3. It did. It got announced. I was very excited. And then when we saw the first full kind of 10 minute, 15 minute gameplay thing that we saw at E3 this past year, I was so, so, so happy with what we saw. It's exactly what I wanted it to be. You know, QT heavy, big set pieces, really funny, that kind of real bright kind of art style to it. And, you know, fine. And obviously, as well, you know, we've got a villain in the game that I really don't know a lot about. I'm not a big Spider Man comic reader at all. I, I just a guy who watched the movies and watched the cartoons when he was a kid and played the video games. You know, I, that's what my relationship with Spider Man is. So, being able to find more up about these people is going to be really cool. It could be the Arkham like of Spider Man for me, kind of how, you know, Arkham was this series you know where you know I, I love batman i love all the stories that i found out with batman but it taught me a lot more about some of the villains and maybe led me to go do my own research and i found out a lot more about him spider this spider-man game could be the same thing and you know it, the combat while it's going to be you know different abilities and a different complete tone to what batman is because it's a completely different character and different in the way that they do things it's going to be that thing where you're bouncing from enemy to enemy and a lot of enemies around you and I just can't wait to go around New York and, you know, really play as Spider-Man because it looks really, really interesting. And it looks what I want it to be. And some people were slagging it off saying, you know, it's really QT heavy. But what we saw was a set piece. And I'm pretty confident, even if a lot they have a lot of those in the game, I personally don't mind because that's what I want out of a Spider-Man game. And if you're any of you in the GNM podcast where we've talked about Spider-Man at all, We've debated this quite at length, whether you know it's going to be the one that we want or whatever. I've got full faith in Insomniac to do this because they nailed the humour of what we had in Ratchet and Clank. You know, Ratchet and Clank was really kind of a very kind of a similar humour to what the Marvel-like Spider-Man stuff is, and I feel that Spider-Man is going to be one that really takes it a step further. It's going to be a huge game, as we saw, you know, what we saw in the whole thing with Spider-Man in that little area, you know, with the people on top of a building, being able to go from building to building and stuff like that. Looks a hell of a lot of fun. And I can't wait to get me teeth in it and really give it a go because Spider-Man is a character that, like I said, hasn't been treated with respect by Activision with what we had before. And really, I really love the, you know, the original Spider-Man games, 1, 2, and 3. And I know 3 gets a lot of stick. I loved 3. I thought 3 was, was a really, really good game. So I'm hoping that this one kind of brings it back, really gives a new light to it. And I think that they are. They nailed, you know, some sort of overdrive, Ratchet and Clank, like I said before. And I feel like they're going to nail Spider-Man as well. So that's why I'm really looking forward to it. 2018, it's out. I'm going to be out this year. People are saying June, July. I think that's a good, accurate bet to make. I think it's a good time to bring a Spider-Man game out because, you know, summer's not really a time where you get a huge amount of new releases. This year we did, but on the general cause, we don't really tend to get a lot of releases in summer. So I'm hoping that Spider-Man really does kind of own that period, really. And I'm hoping it's a game that I really have a good affection for and really do enjoy my time with. Hicksfield? That's actually really cool. <laughs> So thanks a lot for watching my most anticipated games of 2018. I want you to let me know what your most anticipated games are. If I've let anything out, please let me know, argue with me, do what you want to do. I'm looking forward to see what people are looking forward to, because I'd love to see how the differences in these lists are, seeing the different type of gamer. And it's kind of hard to actually to make this list as well. I've left some games on it, off here as well, you know, games like Nino Kuni 2, which I'm looking forward to and things like that. But as well, you know, there's games that we haven't heard about yet that are going to be announced, you know, throughout the year and come out, you know, little indie games that surprise us as well. So I'm very much looking forward to seeing how similar this list is to what my top 10 games of the year are of 2018. So I'm definitely looking forward to seeing what you guys are going to be looking forward to. Please leave your comments, like it, follow me on Twitter at Agoracy, and I'll see you guys later. Goodbye.